Alright guys, it's your buddy Kindips here today. We are playing some uh, more Yakuza Like a Dragon. Alright, let's continue. Hey. Go. Yeah. Go.
Yeah. すみませんでした。
Thank you for joining us on our tour today. I'm sure there are a few times I made a mistake or two. And for that, I apologize. No, no. It was a lot of fun going around Chinatown like that. Thank you. That big bully guy was really scary. But you were so cool. You didn't flinch one bit. Oh, no. I squeaked like a mouse. I was super scared. <laughs> You're funny, miss. Oh, miss. What was the name of that pig we saw at the end? The Swine Latang. It's a new specialty here in Chinatown. They say you'll be blessed with delicious food after rubbing its ear. That's right, Swine Latang. That thing's so cute. I want to get a phone strap or something. If you're looking for those, they sell them at the shop near the entrance, so by all means, please stop by. Thank you so much. Do you feel like you got any better at guiding people today, miss? Actually, you know what? I'm not nervous anymore. Hey, that's great. Uh, thank you, everyone. That's it for the tour. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Kasuka-san, thank you so much for today. You really know how to fight. Wow, that's pretty much all I'm good at. But forgive me. Great job standing up to that gorilla, Ayami. I was really scared at first, but when I thought about protecting my customers, I didn't feel so afraid anymore. Right? Dependable, cool, and most importantly, able to create the best memory for all the customers. That's why I came here. That's the kind of tour guide I want to be. That's really great. I'd say you were four for four on that, Ayami. The tour customers looked like they were having a lot of fun, and your dad and mom were both impressed too. You think so? Oh, I'm so glad. It's really all thanks to you, Kasuka-san. It's because you worked hard, Ayami. You've got some great parents. <laughs> well, I'm going out with them tonight, so I'll be sure to treat them well. Oh, right. I'd like you to have this, Kasuka-san. All right then. I hope to see you again sometime. <sighs> okay, time to head back. Um, excuse me. Huh? Sorry to bother you. I'm Ayami's mother. And I'm Ayami's father. Thank you so much for helping her today. No, I didn't do anything that special. Ayami worked hard because she knew you guys were coming. Well, that girl can be a little scatterbrained sometimes, but she does her best to be a good daughter. We were worried that all she might do was try to please us, and that her performance would suffer because of it. That being said, we were very much relieved to see how well she did today. I never knew Ayami was so strong, nor that she could make others smile like that. My husband even cried he was so moved. Oh, come on. That's beside the point. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be an even better tour guide from now on. Every parent has to let their child fly solo at some point. And it helps that there's great guys like Kasuka-san out there, too. And just what is your relationship to our sweet Ayami, exactly? Hmm? Oh, please, dear. Oh, right. That was rude of me. Kasuga-kun, was it? We'd like you to have this. I hope you'll be there for Ayami if she ever needs you again. <sighs> Good to see a family that's looking out for each other like that. Keep up the good work, Ayami.
ありがとうございます。Hold on. Mate! Yo.
すみませんでした。Go. Thanks for everything, Kasuga-san. Don't mention it. No, I've relied on you for everything. This is the least I can do. Please, take it. Looks like he started thinking more like an adult. And here I thought he was still a boy. I wanted him to hurry up and be independent. But maybe I was the one depending on him. I'm back. Oh, uh, Kasuga-san. Hello. Hey, welcome back. <clears throat> what now, Dad? Another lecture? Yuta, can you make some fried rice? I'm, uh, getting a little hungry. Huh? Just make it yourself. Come on, Yuta, make some. For me, too. Huh? Uh, oh, all right. Thanks for waiting. Two orders of fried rice. Hey, looks pretty damn tasty. We'll, uh, see about that. Here goes! Mmm. Yup, I was right. No way an amateur made this stuff. I think maybe you got better, huh, Yuta? <laughs> Thank you. Hey, how was it? You're definitely improving, but it's still not quite there. Damn it. This fried rice. It's a little too salty. Dad? So much for honesty. <laughs> Let's go. 
まで行かれますかそれでは。Watch me. Hey. No way. またね
hell is this place? They serving up dinosaur burgers or something? Oh, dumbass. It probably means you'll feel as strong as a dinosaur if you eat it. You're both wrong. They mean it's so good, you'll want to hunt down a dinosaur when you're done. Hunt down a dinosaur? That's a hell of an imagination. What do you think, Junji Han? It looks as though the dinosaur is impressed with the size of the hamburger. That's my take, anyway. Ah, that's a new one. True. If I saw a hamburger that big, I'd be shocked, too. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's go with that. Huh? What were we talking about? You may enter. Thank you, Chairman Hoshino. Captain Takabe said it would be okay for us to talk? I heard. And I believe I already know why you've come. You've done us a great service. I would not still be leader of this clan if it weren't for you. Does that mean the Seiryu clan's gonna pull through? I can't say for sure yet. About 20 to 30 percent of our men defected to the Omi. And the ones who stayed are grumbling behind my back. And it's hard to blame them. They just found out the Jincho standoff was all a sham. Zhao told me he's giving up his position as the leader of the Liu Meng. Songhui is going to lead them. Yes, I know. <laughs> You just know everything, huh? Not everything. But I'll tell you what I do know. Eventually, the Seryu clan will succumb to the Omi Alliance. What? For people who had nowhere to live outside the Grey Zones, the Great Wall of Muscle was their only protection. Now it's crumbling. That's a matter of life or death for them. Already rumors are flying into Jincho's political circles. Rumors that Ogikubo's lost his touch. I'm sure Aoki got those whispers going. He never lets a good crisis go to waste. Oh, really? Aoki knows it would destroy the party if it ever revealed their chair, Ogikubo, forged money for years. Now Aoki can easily blackmail Ogikubo and force him to step down. Aoki will become the new party chair. I don't get it. Why does he want to take Ogikubo's place so bad? The party chair manages elections, so in that role, Aoki could nominate anyone he wants. He'll control the ruling party. Therefore, he'll control the nation. The whole country will be under his thumb? Yes. Especially if I'm right about his next move. I think he's going to try to dissolve Parliament. <clears throat> dissolve Parliament? At a time like this? That's insane! Prime Minister, I understand how you must feel, being unable to rely on Ogi Kubo-sensei. But honestly, I have the power to support you better than he ever could. If an election were held today, I could guarantee you two-thirds of the seats. 
minimum. Do you have a solid plan for doing that? Yes. I'll send Bleach Japan to the districts where the citizens' liberal party is weakest. Bleach Japan can influence votes anywhere. They're incredibly popular. Plus, they have my endorsement. A victory for the party would, of course, move your personal political goals forward. Oh. Tell me, do you think you have the power to maintain the party's stability right now? We don't want it breaking up for lack of support from Ogi Kubo Sensei. You can talk that way to the house, but not to me. Appoint me to party chair and hold an election. If you don't, I'll be forced to make public the nature of Ogi Kubo Sensei's crimes. That would mean the end of not only your administration, but the party itself. But there's no precedent for someone serving as both governor and party chair. Besides, you're much too young. If age is what you want, start digging for some old fossil who can stop me. That is, if you think you can find one. Anyone in particular come to mind? <sighs> Aoki's scheme to destroy the Great Wall worked. Now he's got Mabuchi and the Omi at his command. So much power. Vested in just one man. And it had to be Masato Arakawa. Kasuga, I know you never intended to be at the center of all this. It was pure coincidence that you were there when the soap landowner died. Wouldn't you agree? Yep. Lucky me. But one thing I don't believe is a coincidence, is that you ended up in Ijinsho. Huh? What do you mean? Do you still have that fake bill? Yeah. Uh, didn't... Didn't you say you knew how it ended up on me? Yes. Only one person in the world could have put that bill in your pocket. Who? Who is it? Masumi Arakawa himself. Arakawa-san? No, he... He's the one who shot me. Yes. I'm aware he shot you. But did you ever consider that maybe he did that so you would end up here? What? That fake bill was his letter of introduction between you and me. It was to let me know that you were one of Masumi Arakawa's men. Uh, kind of a weird way to introduce us, don't you think? I think what it means is Arakawa's goals do not align with those of Ryo Aoki. Well then, what are Arakawa's goals? I really can't say, but I do know that he means business. He wouldn't have used that bill if he didn't. Chairman, how exactly do you know Arakawa-san? Huh. Well, that's a long story. And there's a much better place than here to tell it. Aeon Tower. Aeon Tower? Yes. That's where my fate intertwined with Arakawa's. <laughs> he sure seems to be partial to Peking Duck. Yeah. Let's have it for lunch tomorrow. My treat. I'll make the reservation.
Listen. Okay. Go. Hey. All right, guys, everybody can just here. We're going to. 